Today, now that you already know how to find antiderivatives, we're going to work with differential equations that have initial conditions with them. So in order to determine the exact antiderivative, meaning knowing, knowing what C is, we need to be given some information or a point on the original function. So that's going to be our goal. So I'm going to do some pretty basic examples, and then I'm going to do a couple of business applications, uh, because at one point I did teach a university course for a business program, so a couple of those might be helpful to you as well. So we'll start with an easy one here. We have if ds over dt, or ds dt, that's just same as dy dx, ds dt, so this is a position function with respect to time, as you might recall. So if ds dt is equal to, to t, with the initial condition that s equals 3, when t equals 0, we're trying to find the original function. So the position function s. So if we take the antiderivative of ds dt, we have s. Remember that you add 1 to the exponent, so there's a 1 here, add 1 to it, 2, divide by 2, gets rid of the 2, and I have t squared plus c, remember? Don't forget the c. So now double check, take the derivative of this very basic easy one. Yes, it's 2t, and I'm right, and the derivative of a constant is 0. So now all I have to do is say, okay, well, if s is 3, when t is 0, what is c going to be? So I'm going to say, 3 equals 0 squared plus c, and c, obviously, is just equal to 3. So then I can give my concluding statement, and I would say, therefore, s is equal to t squared plus 3. Very easy. Okay, so let's try another one here. Find y equals f at x that passes through minus 1, 0, and satisfies dy dx equals 6x squared plus 6x. They really like that word satisfy in math, don't they? Is it satisfying the equation? Okay, so dy dx, again, that's a derivative of y with respect to x. You might not have used that too much in your calculus course, but you'll see more of it now as you go along. So if dy dx equals 6x squared plus 6x, and we're going to say dy dx is equal to f prime x, so the derivative function of the original function. So this is going to be, we're just going to rename it just to make everything really pretty, because math can be that way. So this is my derivative function. What is the original function? In other words, what is the antiderivative of this? So I add 1 to 2, I get 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2 x and add that one back in here. So 2x cubed. Take the derivative. Yes, 6x squared. And this one, if I add 1 to 1, I get 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3x squared plus c. Okay, now don't forget that we were given the original or a, a, a point on the graph, minus 1, 0. So when f at x is 0, x is equal to 1. So I'm going to do it nice and neatly, like you should too. And I get, this would be 1 cubed is 1, times 2 is 2, and 1 times 3 is 3, plus C. And, um, oh no, sorry, it was minus 1. So minus 1 cubed is minus, that's going to give me negative 2, and a plus 3. So that means minus 2 plus 3 is 1. I bring it to the other side of the equation, and c is going to be equal to negative 1. So then I would say, therefore, f and x is equal to, now go back to the equation I found here, and instead of putting in c, I'm going to put in minus 1. Or you can say y is equal to 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 1, and you're done. How easy is that? Super easy, Miss Averat. Okay, well, those are the tough questions. Let's get to those. First, we'll start with something a little bit easier. If dy dx equals e to the negative x, find the equation y 
which passes through the origin. So you remember that showed up probably a few times in your grade 10. You thought, what, what the heck? What is this? If I see the origin, I mean the point zero, zero. Of course we do. I always thought that looked like a little owl, don't you think? Yes, it does. Okay, so if dy dx is e to the negative x, then I'm going to say that y is going to be equal to negative e to the negative x. Now you know that to be true. Oh, plus c, because the derivative of e to the negative x is e to the negative x times a negative one. So I have to be able to get back to this. Always double check to make sure that your derivative or your original function, the derivative of your original function is this equation. Okay, so they gave me some point. The point was zero, zero. So I'm going to say zero equals minus e to the negative zero, or I'll just say zero plus e, anything to the power of zero is equal to one, but I have to multiply it by the negative. So that means that c is going to be equal to positive one, because of course this would be negative. I bring it over here, flip the whole equation around. And so then I'm going to say that means that y is going to be equal to negative e to the negative x plus one. Or you could say um, y equals one minus e to the minus x. So if you see the equation written that in the solution, you know, they just flipped it around. Often they don't like to lead an equation with a negative, a negative variable or a negative number. So they flip them around just for, just to make your life interesting. And you'll say, oh yes, of course I should have done that. But it doesn't mean you have to. Okay, ds dt equals sine of t. Now remember to get to the sine of t, if I just put cos here, um, let's call this, um, s is equal to, so if I wrote cos of t, because I know they flip between cos and sine, but I've took, if I take the derivative of cos, it should be negative sine, but I want it to be positive, so that means I need to call this the negative cos of t plus c, and s is equal to zero when t is equal to zero, so I'll put zero equals the negative cos of zero plus c, what is the cos of zero? Now, a little quick remembering here for you like this. This is the sine of cos, or the equation of cos, which at zero is one. So if this is negative cos of zero, that means zero is going to be negative one plus c, and therefore c will be equal to one. So I'm going to say, therefore, y equals negative um, cos t plus 1. And again, just like in the question above, you could always write it as 1 minus the cos of t. Okay, number 5, I put this one down because it has some pretty fancy calculations in the end here, which you might get a little confused at. So let's start easy here. So this, we're going to write this first, we're going to get rid of these radical signs, right? Because they just, they're just in the way. So f prime x is going to be x to the half power. Remember, that's the square root. There's a little magical 2 in here, which raises everything to the half power. Now I'm going to take the antiderivative of that. So that's going to give me f at x. That's going to be equal to, now you're working with fractions, so we have a half plus 1. Half plus two halves is three halves. I'm going to divide by three halves, which means multiplying by two thirds. Two thirds x to the three halves. Take the derivative, three halves times two thirds would give me that one. I subtract two halves and I get one half. And this part here, you have to be a little bit careful because yes, you're going to do the same thing. It's going to be three halves. We're going to divide. It's still going to be two thirds. 4 minus x to the 3 halves. Now you have to figure out what sign you're going to put here because as you recall, if you take the derivative of this, you have to take the derivative of the inside. The derivative of negative x would be negative 1. So I want to put this as plus 2 thirds because it was negative here. 
So if you take the derivative of this, it would get back to there. Don't forget your plus C. Okay, so now we have to plug in the values um, to 3. So when X is 3, Y is 2. Or when F at X is 3, X is going to be 2. So I'm going to put 3 here. I'm going to do 2 thirds, 2 to the 3 halves. And this is where you're going to go, oh, look at these horrible numbers. So 4 minus 2 to the 3 halves plus C. So far, so good. Now, if you look here, when I subtract 2 here, I'm going to have 2 thirds, 2 to the 3 halves, and 2 thirds, 2 to the 3 halves. So that means I have two of them. So I'm going to have 3 is equal to 4 thirds times 2 to the 3 halves plus C. And now I need to evaluate C. So 2 to the 3 halves, let's write this out again. That's going to be 4 thirds. The half in the denominator means it's the square root of 2 cubed. I'm going to put it in brackets like this. And I'm running out of room, but I have room for one more line here. Root 2 cubed is the same thing as the root of 8, right? Root 2 times root 2 times root 2 is going to give me root 8 plus C. Now, root 8, we want to rationalize that denominator. Or No, sorry, not rationalize it. We want to write it as a mixed radical. So the square root of 8 if you recall, the square root of 8 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, which is 2 root 2. You probably remember doing that somewhere along the way, right? So if this is 2 root 2, that means this is going to be 3 is equal to, I'm going to multiply the 4 times 2 because I'm going to bring this out. So it's going to be 8 thirds root 2, 8 thirds root 2 or 8 root 2 over 3 if you want, and we still have the plus C. I'm going to bring this to the other side of the equation. That's going to give me 3 minus 8 root 2 over 3 plus C. Oh, not plus C. It's going to now be equal to C. And you can leave it just like that. So in the end, I'm going to say F of X equals, and I want to find where I took the first antiderivative right here. So it's 2 thirds x to the 3 halves plus 2 thirds 4 minus x to the 3 halves. And for c now, I'm going to write plus 3 minus 8 root 2 over 3. And there you go. Okay, so those are some just basic, you know, getting in the, um, e to the x, a sine function, a radical function. And we're going to look at just a couple of word problems that you might encounter something similar to as well, especially if you're in a business program. So it says that a music company estimates that the marginal cost, now remember that marginal cost, you probably ran across this as well in your math course. Um, marginal just means it's the derivative of it, right? So the derivative is a marginal cost because it's the rate instantaneous rate of change. So it says the marginal cost of producing its professional series guitar is C prime X equals 0 0.002 X plus $100 per month when the level of production is X guitars per month. So this is the number sold. The, the marginal cost per guitar per month. So the fixed costs are $4,000 per month. Should be a dollar sign there. $4,000 per month. Find the total monthly cost incurred by the company in manufacturing X guitars per month. Okay, so first we want to take the antiderivative of this to get the cost. So CX is going to be add 1 divided by 2, 0 0.001 x squared plus 100x plus c. So my initial cost is that the fixed cost is $4,000 per month. So that means a point on the original cost function means 
if I don't even produce one guitar, it's still costing me $4,000. So quickly you can see that as soon as I put in 4,000 here, and I put in zero for my X's, I'm going to get that C is equal to 4,000. So that means your cost function is going to be 0.001 X squared plus 100 X plus 4,000, just like that. Okay, so that one was pretty easy. Let's look at one that's just a little bit more difficult, and that is this one. Um, this comes from a textbook that some of you may use if you're in the business program. It's called Applied Mathematics for the Managerial Life and Social Sciences by Tan. And uh, comes from page 818 in maybe an older version. So Canon Precision Instruments make an electronic flash. The marginal profit. So again, marginal just means a derivative, right? The cost per unit. This is the cost per unit, dollars per unit per month when the production is x units per month. So it's just the number being produced, and this is their equation. Fixed production costs are $16,000 per month. At what level of production does Canon realize a maximum profit? Okay, so this is a little bit more work than simply finding the antiderivative, but let's do that first. So p and x is going to be equal to now, don't forget, add 1 here, divide by 2, so I'm going to divide, and I'm going to get minus 0.002x squared. Don't forget this value, right? Sometimes people mix that one up. And take the derivative to see if that's what it gives you. And 20, and an x, and a plus c. Now, if the production costs are 16000 a month, the profit is going to be what you sell minus your costs, right? That's profit. Just like I used to do the um, the old uh, lemonade stand as a kid. The what you bring in is not your profit because you have to subtract the cost of doing business. In other words, the cost of the lemonade and the cookies and paying your mother per hour for baking them. Okay, so that means I need to put in for my C value here, minus $16,000. I'm subtracting it. So profit minus, um, not profit, this would be revenue, right? This is what you brought in. Revenue minus cost gives you profit. Okay, so now that I have that, the question though is, at what level of production does Canon realize a maximum profit? So in other words, I have to find the maximum of this quadratic. Now, obviously you can tell that it's a quadratic, it's concave down because of this. The maximum is going to be here. Um, there's a couple of ways you could do that. You could find the zeros of the function, add them up, divide by two, that will give you the height uh, when you get the maximum height, right? And I did it that way, but you can also do it another way. So um, let's just say, that's what I wanted to do. I'm going to find these zeros. And remember to find zeros, you use the quadratic formula. So x is going to be equal to negative b, you know this off by heart, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And the whole thing is over 2a. So I'm not going to spend time showing you that calculation. It comes out to, uh, I got x is um, 9,123 and 875. And of course, you add these together, 9123 plus 875. You're going to divide it by 2, and it comes out to, I believe, 5,000. So that's where the maximum is going to be. Now, the other way that you might have learned in grade 11 is that minus b over 2a gives you this value. So if I did um, x equals minus b over 2a, minus b would be minus 20 over 2a's. Hmm. 
I haven't done this one yet, so we'll see if I'm right. Minus B over 2A. Let's get up my beautiful pink calculator, which is class clashing with my orange ink. I need some new pens. I'm sorry. Orange is getting kind of crazy, isn't it? So I'm going to divide it by 2 times um, minus 0 0.002. Uh, that didn't work. 0 0.02. Hmm. Negative B. Negative B over 2 A's. That's supposed to give you the X value. Well, I'm going to let you figure that out on your own because obviously I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I don't have enough brackets. Sometimes that happens, right? You need two brackets. So 2 times... Uh, minus 0 0.002 bracket bracket. That gives me 0 0.0008. Ah, that's what happens when you don't check out your work before you start. I'm going to try it one more time. 2 times 0 0.002 is going to be 0 0.004. So minus 20 divided by minus 0 0.004. 20 divided by 0 0.004 equals, now there we go, why didn't that work before? Calculator issues. So I get 5,000 this way as well. I knew it should work, unless something happened. Okay, so I get 5,000 here, I get 5,000 doing it this way. This is obviously the faster route. Minus B over 2A gives you that X coordinate. And if you wanted to know what the profit is, you would plug that back in. 5,000 here for your X, P at 5,000. Let's do it. Why not? P at 5,000. I think that was the second part of the question. I just didn't write it out. So minus 0 0.002 times 5,000 squared. Move that calculator over. Plus 20 times 5,000 minus $16,000. Okay, we'll try to do that fast. So I've got 5,000 in there already. I'm going to square it. Answer squared times minus 0 0.002. Um, plus 20 times 5,000. That's not 20. Woo! Big numbers. 5,000 <laughs> square times negative 0 0.002 equals that. So that's minus 5,000 here, 50,000. Plus 20 times 5,000 is 100,000 minus 16,000. There we go. Okay, so that's 50,000 minus 16,000. That should be 50 minus 16 is 34,000. Right. Ta-da! That's how much money they made. Okay, so there you go. There's some little work for you on initial values and a couple of word problems. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.